Hey, meteorologist James Whelan here, waiting, waiting, Sunday night for this god-awful game to end. The Bears getting killed. The Bears getting killed. But yet, we got to wait uh, probably midnight now until the show goes on. So, I'm going to do another Impact Zone show, and I know everybody's been texting me and asking me, what is up? with the surf chances this week because they've been going back and forth and back and forth. So we're going to try to clear up things here. Uh, it does look like we are going to see swell. I never said it was going to be anything huge, uh, but it does still look like we'll get a little bit of something. Okay? So let's look at a few things here. Not that one. Let's look at this one first. All right. What's going on here? This is kind of the tropical map, so I'm going to see if I can scoop this entire thing up. Hey, there we go. Check that out. Oh, let's get rid of my face. You don't want to see that anymore. All right, so what we have right here, we have uh, low pressure developing offshore. We have a little upper level low here, and you see, you know, with this front, this kind of swinging through. What's going to happen is, though, uh, this is going to just meander around out here. Might even get closer back towards the central Florida coast before it finally starts to move on out. Uh, that's good in a way for us, for sure. Sitting out there as long as possible is good. Um, the strength of it is not going to be all that strong, unfortunately, but I think it will be enough to at least send a little bit of a swell our way. Waist, maybe chest high. I know that's not huge, but at least it's something. And the proximity of the low to us, it being very close and all, like right here, means that our local winds will be offshore pretty much the entire time. And I think we're going to keep with this flow, this northwest flow to a north-northwest flow for a little while here. We'll get a couple of reinforcing shots of the cooler air to come on through and kind of keep us in this same air mass. Seasonable, but not really cooler than normal, not really warmer than normal. It's about where it should be this time of year, but it keeps us steady instead of fluctuating up and down a lot. It'll keep us steady here going into the next several days, and uh, that in turn, it keeps the flow uh, going out of the north-northwest or so, keeps it from turning directly on shore and warming things up and moistening things up with the humidity too. So uh, we should be all right. Now, what we're looking for right now is the winds to pick up. The low is approximately where these buoys are. Boy, I wish we still had that number 12 buoy, St. Augustine buoy, because it would really show us something going on. Uh, but at least what we're seeing now is the wind picking up because we were barely seeing that before, but the wind is starting to pick up. Not that strong. You notice it is turning more north than northwest, and I noticed the swell, too, finally turned around to the uh, north and northwest out there um, when before, uh, it doesn't go back that far, but before it was like southeast or something ridiculous. Uh, so that's encouraging to see uh, right there. Let's check the Fort Pierce buoy. Even though it doesn't have wind, it at least shows the swell. And well, you can see it here. We turned it to north, and east, northeast. We got a period now of, uh, you know, East northeast swell started to show up because you see a five second period that's basically wind chop. And then a nine second period takes over, and that's the dominant swell here at about three feet. Now, at the east northeast. Now, that's not huge or anything, but that may make a little bit of a wave uh, tomorrow, especially up coast. Now, what's been happening is we've been a little bit delayed with the swell because. Uh, this thing has taken its time here, moving across the state and starting to develop. It's still really not fully developed out there. We really need this thing to, to sit out here maybe another 12 hours. Then we'll start to get some fetch to form, some wind to blow, and then some swell to be made. Got another day before that happens. Oops, I didn't want to show that. Okay, now let's get to the maps here. We'll scoot this down. And I'm going to zoom in instead because everything is close to home, what's going to be making our ways now. So we'll, we'll zoom in, and then I'll widen it as we go a, a little bit later in the forecast here. No, I don't want to answer your survey question. All right, maybe that's a little bit too zoomed in, so let me zoom out. All right, so this is the 
18Z run GFS. We're going to look at this. Uh, and you see it does develop a pretty nice fetch right there. Notice, I mean, it's not the biggest of fetches, but, you know, it goes back pretty far. Uh, this is uh, probably 30 mile an hour winds in the yellow here. This color is about 20, say. So 20 to 30 mile an hour winds. And, yes, it's pointed down to us. It's in the nook. Everybody knows I call this area here. This is the nook. The nook. Right in there. When we get any kind of fetch in this nook, that's what sends waves to South Florida, to Palm Beach County. Of course, our swell window is rather small, so we need everything to form kind of in this nook. And that even sends it a little bit farther down, too. That's what you look for there. And, and that's what we're seeing. Not the biggest, again, not the strongest, but enough for a waste to maybe chest high swell and notice the low sits there a little bit it does wind up look at this this looks even better right here we got some orange in there that's like 35 mile an hour 30 knot 35 mile an hour winds pointed straight down to palm beach county and uh this is monday night when this happens so now that's what we're thinking the swell a little bit delayed i think by tuesday is when this part of the swell punches down into Palm Beach County. It'll probably be, uh, you know, a very consistent type swell where you see like a 10 wave set move on through and then it goes flat for a little bit and then a 10 wave set. That's the type of uh, swell this will be. So let's, when we go out to the future here, you notice the wind here still in Palm Beach County. Well, we're straight offshore. We're northwest. Uh, a little bit onshore up in north of the Cape. Sideshore onshore-ish. But south of there, we're still talking about some offshore winds. And this right here, this is Tuesday mid-morning. So I think the early part of the swell will start filling in then. And then by Tuesday evening, this is Tuesday evening... We still have a little bit of fetch pointed at us. Most of it is not. Most of it is pointing away. But our winds in Palm Beach County, at least, or at least after the bend, so say south of Singer Island, the wind is still offshore. North of there, it's kind of side shore, side onshore. But uh, I think Tuesday, the wind should stay offshore pretty much all day long. And then let's go into Wednesday when kind of the brunt and the good angle of the swell fills in. Notice the wind does change, the, the low moves up here, it's moving up in this direction, and we have mainly the flow like this, sure out of the north, northwest. Uh, we have side to onshore winds north of the bend, and then south of the bend we have offshore winds still. So Singer Island south, offshore winds, and I say North County northward, you're going to have side shore and then onshore winds later in the day. So the morning will probably be the best time. Wednesday morning, south of the bend will be cleanest, but I still think it'll be early in the morning, it'll be clean. You might need the wetsuit too, it might be a little bit chilly in the morning. Not terribly cold, but a little bit chilly. And then notice that that wind just kind of still stays north, northwest. As we go into Thursday here, finally turns around, but look, it just calms down. Pretty much all this right here. Calm wind, calm ish wind, too. So not bad. And uh, the wind calms down on Thursday. Still maybe a little bit of swell trickling in. Maybe longboard leftovers, I call it. North-northeast wind, though. So a little crinkle to it there. And then we start to get, to another little fetch developing up here, which may start to fill in a new swell on Friday. So here's another little low. This is going to change. I'll tell you what. This is going to change a hundred times before next weekend. Uh, but what it's showing is some kind of trend of we are getting into this pattern now. Uh, this like seven or eight day pattern where something comes through every seven or eight days. And then something comes through that's going to make waves. Whether it be offshore like this low that may push in or a big high moving through and we get some onshore wind chop from it uh, something is going to be there to reinforce our 
uh, swell coming on in at least once a week. And let's just go just for the heck of it, even though, like I said, this is going to change a hundred times. This shows this other little uh, push going through, but the good thing is now it keeps the wind away. All of this is just light wind, but we have wind up here creating some swell, a nice little fetch forming up here that's going to push our way again. So possibilities, possibilities, my friend. These are all possibilities, my friends, of a new swell coming into the forecast. So that's, that's good to know. And let's just, for the heck of it, fast forward it all the way to <laughs> the end here. So this is uh, Tuesday of Thanksgiving week, and we see just a humongous blast of cold air. Here's a big front. This would be howling northwest winds. This would mean a nice refraction swell here for Palm Beach County and this would be super cold conditions. We laugh at that now. We laugh at that now because it's, you know, the million day forecast out here, two weeks or so. But let me show you this. We try to back it up with the meteorology and with what's happening in the, the, the weather and totally across the country, across the globe. Instead of just looking at the models, we look at what the weather pattern may be too. And then that kind of gives us a little bit of confidence to say, well, maybe it's onto something here. Of course, the specifics will change a million times, but it may be onto something here with possibly a cold blast. And let me show you this. This is the Arctic Oscillation. Um, remember I talk about the NAO, this is the AO. Now the NAO is more, you know, we really start to look at that kind of later in winter. When winter really starts to come in, that's when we look at the NAO. That's when it makes a bigger difference in our weather and getting cold fronts down here and getting low pressure to move offshore instead of up the coast. Right now, we look at the AO. They're very similar, it's just the pressure differences in different parts of the North Atlantic and the Arctic. So this right here, it's tanking negative and that's through mid and late November, which is Thanksgiving, late November. Uh, so we could be setting up ourselves here for a big blast of cold air, possibly at Thanksgiving, maybe before Thanksgiving, we'll see. So uh, this just gives just a little bit of credibility to what's going on. Again, it's going to change a hundred times. We all know that. You can't just sit here and watch the models because they constantly change. But uh, let's move this over here. And, you know, it just shows that we're in for some blast. And this is about the time when we get it anyway. So it's not really out of the ordinary. It's about the time that we do get uh, some blast of cold air in here around Thanksgiving or the end of November. We get a nice refraction swell in there with it too so that would be great if that happened again uh, so I'll keep an eye on that I updated everything on the web page check it out we'll go through the brief rundown right now we'll have we will have a, a small building swell on Monday flat in the morning then we could see a little pulse I wouldn't be surprised maybe a little pulse in the afternoon that comes and goes rather quickly possibly around the low tide mark which is uh, mid to late afternoon Tuesday probably small in the morning, then building in the afternoon as we start to get more of the brunt of that swell in here. And I think by nightfall, it should be pretty fun. Waist high, stomach high, maybe even chest high by the end of the day. Wednesday morning, I think is when the peak of the swell is gonna hit, waist the chest. Again, it's not gonna be huge. I don't really even think head high anywhere, uh, but waist the chest, uh, fun, because it will be clean offshore winds at least in the morning on Wednesday then the wind turns more north you get that side shore texture to it then it'll start to drop on Thursday for all the details wptv.com slash surfing I'll see you in the water peace